Welcome back to Bourbon Real Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today, I'm sitting down with my boy, Matt Jazzy. What's up, man? What's up, bro? Not much, man. So uh, today, we are doing something uh, fun and unique just because they don't make these anymore. Well, I mean, they do make them, but not like they used to. They don't make them like they used to. Yeah. So these are the good old Four Roses Gold Necks. So for, for folks that maybe don't know the difference between what a Gold Neck is and what the regular ones are or the or the more recent ones. Do you, do you want to give us a little bit of backside on that, man? Sure. I mean, they're just from the older Master Distillers. So Jim Rutledge used to be the Master Distiller here. And, and these were, you know, his picks. They were his pride and joy. Um, got to have a real fun time in the Rick House, putting some of these mash builds together, did some really cool stuff. You know, Four Roses has 10 different mash builds that they do for their single barrel program. Um, they take a couple of those and they blend them together for their small batch, for their yellow label, um, and for their uh, limited barrel select, whatever the fuck it's called. I don't remember. Yes. That was like 101 proof. The small batch select. Small batch select, ah, yes. I, Yeah, I knew yeah. it was. I was like, you have it right. I just don't think you got all the words in there. Right? Yeah, so... Yeah, we'll play. You said scrapple. barrel select, but it's small batch select. That's Whatever. right. Whatever. No, it's all good. No, I wasn't. Whatever. I wasn't. I wasn't. Wasn't making fun of you. So these ones are cool because you're right, Scott. The golden X don't really exist anymore, and it was really just more of a subtle change from a gold neck to their standard tradition. But we always knew that when we saw Four Roses single barrel with a gold neck, that it was an older pick, older meaning five, six years ago. Right. But. Um, harder to come by, uh, you know, different palettes pick them out. Seasons affected them differently. Uh, Jim's got a different palette than Brent has. So it's, you know, they're going to be a lot of similarities. Now in hindsight, when Brent was younger at the distillery, he still had a lot of influence on some of these. So it's kind of cool to see how his palettes, you know, increased what he's taught onto the other people that helped him pick them out. Lots of boring shit that no one really cares about. End result is these are fucking good and hard to come by. <laughs> so also, a gold neck is actually a paper label that was taped to it, whereas now they put like the pleather slash yeah. leather little wrap around the, the and it's neck gold. of the single it barrels. It is literally gold. It is gold, for sure. So, so we, we, got, we were fortunate enough to grab two of these out of my collection downstairs, yep. out of 700. So 700. There's a lot. There's a lot, but I don't know that there's 700. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> So these two we grabbed are from Old Town. Old Town's a, a local store. Another free advertisement there. Yay. Ooh. Old Town Wine and Spirits. Yeah. These are cool because the two different recipes we got, we got an OESK and an OBSF. One's, again, same thing, about 10 years for each one of them. Yep. Uh, maybe a little bit older on the One OBSF. was really precise. It said 10 years and eight months. Most of them say that. I know, but I was just being funny because, you know, the one of them just says 10 years. So. Well, it could be exactly 10 years. Yeah, but it's most likely 10 years. It's not going to say 10 years in like three days. No, I know. I, I get where you're coming from, but it's probably just short of 10 years, one month or something. But I always laugh because the whole age statement thing has almost gotten crazy because you, you see more and more of the... Oh, this is seven years and three days and 17 hours old. <laughs> it, they don't really do that, but it seems like that's the where it's gone. Right. No, I agree. And these are two totally different mash builds. Um, one's more of a high rye. The other one's kind of just their entry level, that 21% rye. So they're, uh, they're E strand versus their B strand, right? Their E strand is kind of a low rye versus their B E strand, which is a high rye. So that's where a lot of the difference that we're probably going to taste today because we did a lot of rye earlier today. So our palates are going to be on point with that. Yeah. I think we're probably going to pick up maybe some more fruity notes off of some of these just because I think OBS, any of the OBSs I think are more known for like more of a fruitier type taste off that rye. Well, and, and you know, some of the OEs, you know, obviously everyone loves a good OESO. Mm. OBSO, it's which oddly scary. enough, so why do I like the O so much better? Like OBSO, OBSO, or just like to me the the bee's knees of, of four know. roses. I don't know, Scott. Why don't you tell me? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, like I can't tell you why they're they're two of my favorites. You know, I just it's one of those things that when I try them, and I've tried all ten. I'm actually in the process of trying to recollect to get all ten of them at one time. I've tried all of them, but I've never owned all ten of them at one time, which is kind of weird. I own all ten of them. Of course you do. There's like 
five hundred bottles down there. I don't know if there's really not. No, I, how many? How many four rows do you really think you have? Like seventy six. Seventy six. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's a lot. I, I was kind of in, in, I was kind of impressed. So. So I, part of me thinks. So I appreciate the O strand and the flavor profile that it gets, which is why I really like. They the, all begin with O. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. Rah, rah, rah. So the ending O. So you get a lot of that cherry, your apple, and your berry flavor profiles from that O, which is what we appreciate. Now, Scott, what did you just try there? I was just trying the OBSF because uh, I'm always intrigued by the OBs versus the OEs because OE is kind of what I grew up on just because of the time that I, that I spent with uh, – Al Young through the Mercy events, like it seemed like he was almost always bringing some kind of o, OBs or to the party, I guess would be the best way to put it. But I'm fairly certain. Like I seem like I drank a lot of OBS Vs for a long time, which oddly enough seem to be harder to find now because I think they put that more in the small batch and the small batch select. Like I think it and the OBSO both go in there. And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that the OBs were one of his was his main feature for the Al Young, the fiftieth. And that's a good possibility. So I, it might be just Which, that that's what Al's favorites so were were the OBs. Oh god, way. so good. Listen, do I want to spend nine hundred dollars on it? No, no, but at, yes, but no. I mean, anywhere. So that's definitely a five hundred dollar bottle. There's very few bottles that I will go in and be like. It's that, good. That's a five hundred dollar bottle. I just remember when it first came out. We were in. I was in North Carolina, and um, we, we walked into this random bar. You know, had a had a me and my brother in law. We had a few drinks, and we were talking with a bartender, and he was like, "Oh, I just got this uh, new Four Roses." Uh, you know, Al Youngin, and I was like, "All right, crack that pitch. Let's try it." And he poured us up for free, hmm. and I was like, "Hell yeah!" Hindsight, that was really fucking good. At the time, it was really fucking good. Can I really tell you what I tasted? No. Could I stand up straight? No. <laughs> so what's really sad is you you missed the opportunity to I maybe many, fully I, enjoy it. I missed many opportunities to fully enjoy it. Just, but I do have a bottle of it. Hmm, I've never seen that down there. You That's will not weird. see it down there. Is that is that at the dad's house? No, it's here. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. It's, so there's like bottles I have out and then like right. all of those are okay if I get drunk and like drink them. It's fine. Right. But there's like a stash that's like, oh, no, just hold on. It's like the fire safe. <laughs> You've got to try to get into this. You, you got you to remember the combination in order to get into yeah, it. Yeah. So. <laughs> so so that way your wife doesn't kill you because she just found out that you just drank $900 of the bourbon in yeah, one sitting. Yeah, and there's a shotgun sitting next to it as well. So if she decides <laughs> to change her mind real quick, it'll be kill two birds with one stone. There you go. That sounds like a good a good idea, honestly. <laughs> probably, not, pr- pr- probably not bad. So I, I'm diving in on this OBSF, you know, the nose. So we're going OBSF. So it, so these are cool because they're similar proofs, uh, both about 120 proof. And this one is called Nick's Hot Licks. I don't know what Nick licked that was hot, but, you know, he had a hot lick. Okay. <laughs> Do you know Nick? No. Who's Nick? I don't know. I'm assuming Nick is one of the guys that owns Old Town. But I, I, now I'm going to email those guys or, or DM them on Facebook and be like, hey, we, we're we doing a review on some of your all's older picks. You, do you all want to come on and maybe we'll talk about it later? Correction. We already did a review on their picks. Facts. <laughs> so I just love the nose on this thing. I mean, it's just. Listen, all Four Roses noses are great. But why is that? Why is Four Roses just like synonymous? Is it because it's a rose? It's a it's a smelling thing? You know, it smells like flowers? I, I, I don't know. know. No, it doesn't smell like flowers. I know it doesn't, but I'm just being funny because, you know, roses are supposed to smell good, right? Flowers are supposed to smell good. Try harder. So I, I wish Travis was with us today because oh, Travis. Travis would be like, oh, and this is the blah, 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 blah. Because Travis just is like the ultimate Four Roses nerd. Like he's so cool about his knowledge of Four Roses and, he and what he knowledge. brings to it. So. Talking about the Four Roses collections, like there's very few Four Roses collections like Travis's. Yeah, he'd be like, 76, fuck that. <laughs> like, Piss Travis me. is like, see my spreadsheet. <laughs> and it's like, in, like Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> I bet it is. Five pages long. <laughs> it's awesome. I respect it. <laughs> He's probably got tasting notes on every bottle. There's a, I mean, most bottles have tasting notes on them, but. No, but I mean, listen. Listen. I, I love Travis. He's like one of my favorite people in the bourbon group, in the bourbon world. And like, got a great palate super duper knowledge but he he he's like he reminds me of uh 
have you met Jake Yost? He's from the TBSA or one of those uh, Northern Kentucky whatever groups. He's like those dudes that like says, oh, I can smell like Rainier cherries, you know, or whatever, you know, obscene like uh, Bing cherry. I mean, like he, he'll pull some weird thing that nobody really knows that much about. But you know what? They're going to repeat that to their friends. Yep, like kumquat. Ooh, that smells like kumquat with with you know cedar. And you'd be like, "What the fuck? What's a kumquat? I don't even know what a fucking kumquat is." You know, but <laughs> like those dudes are smart. Like they're just brilliantly smart when it comes to bourbon. And like, there's just very few of those guys that I know and respect. And and Travis is just one of those dudes for me. And I just I, Q's kind of another one. Q's got a I feel like a really good palate. Like he kind of understands. He's got a good nose. Like he 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 gets that stuff. So I don't know. So I'm diving into this. If you want to talk a little bit more about what you know about the OBSF, we no, can go from there. You're doing great so far. So, I don't know. Tasty as shit, though. And that's all we got today. We're going to drink and watch Glorious Bastards still. Full body on that rye. Man. It does have some spice, though. It's got some nuts on it, for sure. For 120, what was it? So like 121? Yeah. 122.4. So, it definitely has some heat to it. Um, man, I just can't caramel and vanilla and that 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 rye pop um i get almost like not even cherry i get like more like a it's weird almost like an apple like a pear maybe like a like a what, what's the what's the not sweet pear called a bartlett which one's which the bartlett or bosch yeah I, bartlett. I, I think the I bartlett, think is bartlett is the one is the that's a little bit more citrusy or a little bit like that's almost what I'm getting. Almost like almost like a pear flavor versus an apple or or cherry. I don't know. What do you, what do you think about that one? I mean, I'm gonna take another drink and I will get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. These are good. I mean, I'm always a fan of these, but I do appreciate that. So my favorite part of these four roses is, I mean, besides drinking it, is as soon as you pop that cork open, you get this wonderful aroma of what the barrel is supposed to smell like, and I think that's super characteristic of these four roses bottles they just all have a different aroma to it when you pop it open i love it absolutely love it what did nick lick i mean really what did nick's hot licks <laughs> wow so i added just a touch of water to this i'm not a fan of adding water so. yeah i it, it almost just takes away the heat it takes away some of the flavor oh my god it's just so weird i will say the nose opened up quite a bit though yeah, but you lose. I mean, how cool it smells good, but yeah, doesn't well, taste good. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't taste the same. But it definitely the, the nose on it though. Just put that on a candle right there, buddy, with a little bit of water in it. <laughs> I mean, it, it it smells phenomenally good. Phenomenal. That's so crazy. Why is it that way? It does. It like almost completely just kills the spice. Like in just just a couple of drops. I mean, literally. I don't know. It's just really weird how that worked out. And it almost took all the fruitiness away. It just made it just yeah. a little bit of spice and a little bit of that. Had a lot. It still has a lot of medium body to it, though. It kind of comes across the mid part of your palate, but it's it's just kind of flat once you add water to it. So do not add water to, to any OBSFs that I'm just saying based off of this one. Right. So I don't know. And the next one is what, an OESK? Yeah. 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 That's, one your, that's one of your favorites, though, isn't it? The OESK? I do. I like them. I mean, I feel like not, when I was down there, I saw like, I like the OESQs. 14 or 15 of them. No, the OESQs are good. OESQs? Hmm. Yeah, those are those are good. Maybe that's what we should do one day is do all 10 on, in one episode. Do 10 OESQs. Yeah, we'll be drunk halfway through it. No, all 10 like flavor, all, yeah. all 10 recipes in one episode. That's fine. We but, can do that. But we'll be drunk in like halfway through. Uh, this was fucking great. <laughs> Can you show good? Yes. Travis, by Taco Bell. <laughs> I, I really like this. Oh, uh, 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 oh yes. What's mate. the pizza guy getting here? We ordered this shit fucking hours ago. So it's funny, talking about recipes and things like that. So OESO seems to be the one that kind of, everybody loves it. It's the hot one. Low rye, lots of fruit. Right, you know, things like that. Cherries, fruit, whatever. Uh, but there's some that are, you just don't see. Like, I mean, I very rarely rarely see an OBSO. I rarely see an OESV. I have a lot of OESVs. And an OES, um, wait a minute, the OBSQ is the other one that I rarely ever see. So do, do you do you know why that is? You just don't get out enough. 
I mean, really, man. Really, like there's not that. You live in Indiana, dude. What do you expect? No, oh, you don't. Oh. You don't see those three mash bills that often. <laughs> and why is that? Do you know? No. You know what? They're probably because again, it's going to come down to when you barrel pick a four roses. What do you expect it to taste like? I mean, they're all so different. Right. So what is your expectation of a Four Roses? It's not one of those three recipes right. because... That's not what you taste very often. It's not but what that, you taste very but it's off profile according to what you like. But right. are they always... Is there a ton of them in the single barrel programs? Maybe not. It's, you know, maybe it's 10, maybe it's twofold. Right. I, I just... It's one of those things where it's... If I could pick it, a single barrel of Four Roses, I would pick one. It's a mystery to me as to why you only see... Cause it, I feel like there's a plethora of OESK out there. There's a plethora of... Plethora. Plethora, that's what I said. Um, of, you know, OBSK. I feel like there's a lot of OBSFs. I feel like there's... There are a good number of OESOs, too. I mean, there's yeah, a lot. But Shit, it, fucking Kroger had one. Uh, my thing is, though, I feel like when people see OESO, they just fucking buy it regardless. Yeah. Whether it's the best of the three or four that they get to try, they just buy it because it's an OESO. Oh, no, no, no. Mm-mm. No, because there's a group of people. Yeah, you say that, but... There's always a group of people. Listen, I, I went on one pick with, with a group of guys, and the one dude was just like, well, I'm running this pick, I'm going to take this, and this is what we're getting. Whether everybody agreed or not. Oh, well, that's not. I and, mean, I yes, I do get that. But, like, why invite people to have their opinions? Some people don't. Some people just invite people because they want to have people with them, but they really just don't value their opinion. I mean, it's just the facts. I mean, truly. I mean, you, you may not value my opinion when I it value comes your to. Opinion. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, we were going to go do a Knob Creek pick, right? Yeah. And you know what you love about Knob Creek, and yeah. you know what you feel like most people love about Knob Creek, right? You might go in there and be like, oh, this is Knob Creek. Like, this is what I want. Like, this is deep flavor of, you know, cherry and caramel so, and all those things. And then, and I might be like, oh, I don't really, I don't really care for that one. And you'd be like, well, this is the one we're getting, right? Because you're running the show. And, and some people are just that way. Some people are just douchey. Right. But, you know, I, I don't know. I appreciate an off profile taste. I appreciate not the same thing that you expect it to be. But it can't be so far off course that you're like, this is gross. So, gross. How many how, how many four roses have you tried that were single barrels? You'd be like, well, that's gross. A couple. A couple. I mean, but they're few and far between, right? <clears throat> kind of hard to fuck it up. Well, it's not necessarily it was gross. It just wasn't ready yet. Yeah. So that Or that... it was made for yellow label. <laughs> made for yellow label. It's true. I mean, that's a blend of... Yeah, but so the so, shit that's gross. <laughs> well, but 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 that's the thing. Like, I like OBSV. Like, okay. I I like the fact that you get that apricot and you get a little bit of those, like almost like <sighs> apricot and what's the other little candy fruit that like um maraschino cherry. No, no, no. What what's the one that's like a like a plum? Plum or an apricot? Are they they're basically the same, right? Yeah. So I mean, like I, I like those flavors, right? Like. Anytime I can pull that off of a bourbon, I get excited. Like, it's something that's unique. It's flavorful. It gives you lots of good, you know, It and also it, it adds a lot to, like, whether it's hanging to the glass, whether it's got full body, you know, different things like that. I, I feel like those are things that add that, that add that delicate fruitness to it, pear, things like that. So I, I appreciate that. So I'm going to nose this OESK, which is a 10-year-old. Oh, 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 oh. And this one says... Chad selection, so evidently just That's boring. Chad Chad selected this, so I wonder if Nick has a hot lick and Chad just selects stuff. <laughs> this was also probably before they like quote unquote tatered bottles up, you know. Yes, this is definitely before the tatering of bottles existed. I don't know, you know, I've not seen a recent Old Town pick. Um, have any maybe, of them been yeah. really tatered? Yeah, no, maybe I don't know. Yes. One of those answers is correct. Matt has no fucking idea. Which is okay. You can just say, I don't know, man. No, I gave seven answers. One of them's right. <laughs> Such a dick. <laughs> so this, this this smells like OESK. Like, oddly enough, it smells like OESK. Yeah, for those of us who don't know what OESK smells like. 
I mean, you get a little bit of tobacco, you get a little bit of, you, you can get the rye smell, you get a little bit of maybe almost mint, but it's not mint. Like it's uh, one of those earthier grass tones and like a honeysuckle or, you know, something like that. You get, it's, it's just, it's got that more of that floral scent to me. That's what OBSK does. It gives you some of those things, but it's always usually spicy. It's got great full body, it goes all the way across your palate. So right. we'll have to chase it and see what we think. So what do you what, what what do you think on the nose? Yes. So I think you have those flavors, but I also believe you have a lot of cherry up there. So you've got and it's now the nose originally and kind of that flavor reminds me, I'm not saying this is the same thing, but it does have a lot of what you would assume a single barrel knob creek tastes like when you have those like basic cherry flavors, a little bit of sweetness. Um, you know, some, uh, some candied, like a candied fruit, right? Like a candied kind of texture to it. Yeah, I could get that. But I, I'll tell you what though, on the taste, awesome. it's, it's awesome. It's really good, but it's, man, it's got a huge rye pop to it. I mean, it's got black pepper. It does have a little mint to it, which I'm not necessarily crazy about mint, I, but it's kind of in your mid palate yeah. portion. So it doesn't, it doesn't overwhelm it. I it, think it's a little bit more earthy than minty. Yeah. But like pine or cedar maybe instead of mint i wish you could have seen how scott just said the word pine (laughs) well we do need to move to video but i've got (laughs) problem is i got a face for radio yeah i've got a gopro for it so we'll be good there we go so but so i I think you have like i'm not gonna say it's like you're looking at camel's huff earthy but like you've got some interesting cherry flavors mixed with a little bit of earthiness it's almost not in a bad way but almost like must like like that earthy there's like, no way you can positively spin the word must no you can, can I, I, you? so it, it, like when you think of like earthy flavors like that's one of the things that i guess the smells that kind of come along but like what you think that smells it kind of tastes like but it doesn't taste bad it's just it's different like no, it's there's, it's there's light spice. It's full bodied, right? It's a full bodied drink. It's not heavy on one end, light on the other end. It's pretty consistent all the way through. And you still get those cherries, that spiciness, a little bit of candied. I don't know. I like it. I don't get the cherry. A little bit. I don't know. I get more of like a, almost like a crisper fruit than a cherry. Okay. Like almost like a, like an apple crisp. Yeah, it's hard to put your, almost like a Granny Smith, like a tart apple. Like it's it's a crisp, honestly, it's not even a Granny Smith. It's like a old school crab apple. Oh, okay. Like your grandma, like you, you, they had those crappy little yeah. apple trees yeah, in the yeah, backyard, yeah. like, and you could go in and you could bite into it and it just had that tartness about it, but it was crisp and refreshing. Like that's kind of what I'm getting when I drink this. Like I get that like crispness of like that old tarty. Right. Like old crab apple that grew up on the back tree. Sure, sure. Grandma used to make pie out of, you know. It had pie. Lot, lots of lots of sugar. Grandma and had sugar. pie. Oh, dude, my grandma made the best pie. My grandma and my aunt Panetta. Pie. Wow. Matt's just knocking shit around on the table as we can hear. <laughs> Been drinking, Matt? <laughs> Someone had to cheers me, and it wasn't going to be you. I cheers you all I day know. long, brother. You're my brother right here. My brother from another mother. I guess technically a brother from my from my Jewish mother. <laughs> It's still another mother. It is true. Is that how that works? And refresh me if I'm wrong. Like you technically are what your mom is. In, yeah. In, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that I remember Howard Stern talking about that one time. Howard Stern's the man. Oh my God. That dude is so funny. 27 years and kicking. He's still fucking hilarious. How old is Howard now? Is he like 70? No, he can't be 70. But I bet he's in his mid mid to late 60s. I bet he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't because he's counting money in fucking Beth Ostrowski. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Bitch is hot. God. So Respect that man. So I, I popped a little bit of water in this and the nose just changed drastically. It does. Water doesn't do good things to this. I'm going to try it, though, see what happens. So, like, I, like, a Four Roses single barrel pick, I would not recommend mixing. It's not a good cocktail drink. It's not a good with Coke, Sprite, ginger ale. This one with water is actually really good. Just put, like, a drop in it. It's good without water. No, I'm not. I, Ugh, now I got to get more. I drank it. But I'm telling you, like, I mean, it's just, it's a totally different, like, 
I don't know how to explain it, but like it really <laughs> shit <laughs> dropping the lid. Um, it gives it a, like a totally, totally different flavor. Like I mean, wow! Like I, I'm telling you, dude, this one would just like two drops like it changed drastically and in a good way like i i I very rarely say that about a four roses pick so i'm gonna let you let that air out and get a little couple of drops in there but like i mean man i mean the nose the mo the nose goes from like good to great good to better to best and then the taste itself goes from like what i would consider uh, this to me was a, a good to Slightly less than good OESK to a really good OESK with just a drop of water. Yeah, it is better with a drop of water. But I'll, ah, yeah, that's, the, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, I, I just really brought out the flavors. I mean, it brought the sugar, it brought out some of the, the more um, subtle notes and hints. I mean, you, you get a lot more like of the, uh, and I'm going to call it caramel, not vanilla. Yeah. And then I'm going to say that, like, that fruit definitely dove in, and it's definitely apple. Like, I right. mean, just a definite, like, almost like a sweet, like, tart apple all at the same time. Like, Right, 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 right. Man, that, that just crazy how much that changed it. I agree. So, I don't know. It's uh, two Four Roses picks, two Gold Necks. Both of them are 120 plus. OBSF, OESK. You, right. you just can't go wrong. What's your What's your favorite? I mean, I I like an OESO too. I mean, it's not everyone likes an OESO. OESQs like the, are awesome. Cause though. you like the berries, you like that blackberry. I do. I really do. I I'm the same way. I mean, I just I I, I don't. I guess I we're really all just. Do. I guess we're just not. That's why they make ten of, different recipes, bro. Oh, but like, it seems like everybody loves OESO. Like when you talk to people, like people they like love OESO, OESO because they're told to like OESO from somebody else. If this whole fucking trend was started with someone else being like, OESQ is this and that, and here's a 16 year old OESQ, like, yeah, but who's the douchebag that started all that then? Not douchebag. They're smart. Well, I mean, are they smart? Yeah. That they're like, oh, this is the best one, and then everybody's like, oh yeah, that's the best one. Yeah. Okay, so maybe they are smart. Maybe they're not. Yeah, that people are followers when it comes to this stuff. It, it's like when you give them. Like when we gave out these flavor profiles and what we saw, someone's going to say, re- someone's going to repeat the exact same thing that you did because you have put those flavors in their mind, whether or not they taste it right now. That's what, that's what a lot of it is until they develop their own palate and sense of what is actually there. They're going to know what people tell them. Even some tobacco popped out of this. Like whenever I added that water, like you it, were just adding things. No, I'm not. I'm I just kidding. like no, no, like I just I keep going back to. I know it. like, it's I mean, good, but I'm saying like, all right. So Joe Schmo is going to listen to this podcast. Hopefully, please hit subscribe, and they're going to say, "Oh my God, I had a ten year old OESK, and this one tastes like crisp apples, tobacco, cherries, and like they're going to say those tasting notes because that's what they heard you describe it as, and they have that in their mind of what it should taste like. Gotcha. And so until people start to go out there, so like everyone's like, oh, tier six, right? We're going to talk about this. Speaking of that, tiers, what are tiers? Four and five. Four and five. I'd be damned. Spank my ass and call me Charlie again. So I'm surprised that tier five has actually isn't higher than a 61 proof then. Or Why? Say 61 Why? Percent. Some of the higher tiers are lower proofs. Eh, most of the ones I see are higher. They're tier four. I mean, tier five and six are typically your higher proofs. Whatever. So, but... <laughs> Yeah, so you're agreeing to disagree? No, yeah. <laughs> I don't. We don't have time for that. So, oh, but we again, can talk, it's, we can talk for an hour about yeah, that if we, you want. But, but I'm could. not going to. I don't want to either. There's <laughs> so exactly much other right. things to drink, and you have to watch Glorious Bastards. So go ahead. So you forgot what you were going to say. You no. douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> did for a second. So tier six, right? Everyone hypes up tier six, but I don't think. A tier six four roses is the best. I appreciate a lower tier like a three or a two. Actually, a tier three is kind of the sweet spot for me. Right. But I like those. I like what a lower barrel in the Rick House does to the flavor of it. I like how it ages a little bit slower. Right. I, I appreciate that. And, you know, higher in the Rick House, it's going to age quicker than the bottom of the Rick House. It'll age lower. So. But people are like, tier six is the best. Like, it's always the best. If I blind tasted you 
10 different four rows, even five different four roses and put two tier sixes in there, you're you not going to pick, pick them. those. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. You're not going, you would in, never know it. Unless you're one of those people that literally are only high proof. Like, and then you're, even still, you're probably going to notice this is tier hotter. four and tier five, and they're both 120 proof. Right. But tier four and five, I, listen, we all know Angel Share comes off those. Like, I mean, when they're in the top of that rick house, they are burning it off much faster. I mean, like, what Travis even told us, like, that one that he got was a tier six. It was, what, an OESO or an OBSO, or it was one of the captain's bottles, right? Captain's but he's, like, cool, literally got, like, 17, 20 bottles. What, it was a stupid low 18. It was, like, three, 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 three cases. Oh, that wasn't a captain's. Uh, that was some, anyway, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, but it, it just ate it up. I mean, being tier six, I mean, just will eat up. Now, probably there was a leak and some other things that that attributed to only having such a low yield off those things. But hot, heavy, you know, that's what you typically get out of those tier sixes. I rarely see a tier one that's higher alcohol content than a tier six. And I think that some When's people... When's the last time you even saw a tier one? Four or five months. It's been, really? I mean, it has been a while, yeah. I don't, think I've, I don't think I've seen one in a really long time. Yeah, I mean, it's probably been four or five months. I saw one. I don't remember if it was the keg or Bottles Unlimited or somebody. One of them had it over in Indiana, which was oddly right. enough. And it was a it was a decent pick. I mean, it was good. Um, I, I, I My problem was I think that one was a uh, OBSQ, and I don't necessarily always go for the OBSQs. Right. I just I don't know. They just seem a little bit more off-flavor profile than, than the other ones that sure. I drink. Sure, so. sure, sure. But I don't know. I, I I like this one with water though. Yeah, both good, both both phenomenal picks. So, what have we decided? Gold necks better than regular? Like what you get today? It's all hitting. Man, that's that's such a loaded question because I mean you have ten recipes. You've got multiple years between them. You've got multiple tiers of what they could be. You just don't know. Are they good? Yeah. Should you go find them? Absolutely. But you don't you you don't think that there's that big of a difference between Brent and, and I don't think Jim. there's a big enough difference. I mean, I don't I don't think personally, I don't think you're gonna see you're gonna taste a difference. But again, like I go I go I'll always go back to you, can you blind taste test the difference? I no, you, you can't. You can't. No, oh, you're hundred percent there. You can guess it. Yeah. I mean you may you may be able to guess it and you're guess it right, but your the likelihood's probably not very good. Not gonna know. Hmm. Well, that's it from Bourbon Barrel Talk today. If you want to find us, you can hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. You can email us at bourbonbarreltalk at gmail.com. We're going to have Matt work on getting us in to talk to Brent. <gasps> I'm holding my breath, just like Matt is. But, like, I- I've got all kinds of questions to ask about these 10 recipes. Where does it come from? What's it doing? You know, like, I, I want to, hell, I want to know where they get their corn. Like, I mean, like, it's one of those funny things that when you talk to distilleries and things like that and you start finding out where they're sourcing their corn or they're sourcing their rye. And corn. It's corn. Just, it's all those things are interesting. To it's me. awesome. And I don't know why it's interesting to me. I guess because my, grandf- my grandfather was a farmer and my dad has a little tiny farm that he kind of works, you know, as a retired dude. But, yeah. like, that's just in my blood. But it's just weird how all those things seem interesting to what makes brown water brown and what makes brown water good the barrel know? makes it brown bro no i know but i mean yeah, th- there's so many things are in complexities that go into a bottle that makes each one unique and agreed and where the corn comes from well and that's why there's so many different varieties no. is there's all these different like think about it there's at least nine different factors that go into this bottle that makes it different than this bottle yeah right not different but there's nine factors right so. That makes a huge difference. Well, this is Scott, Matt, Bourbon Barrel Talk. We are signing off. Peace out. See.